It's on Friday Football Fever. Brought to you by Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. How's your energy, Southern Arizona? Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Collar. We will check in with Ari Alexander in just a bit. It is now time for the highly acclaimed, much anticipated Friday football fever on a Thursday night. Yes, because of the holiday Yom Kippur being celebrated on Friday, most Tucson area teams made sure to schedule their games on a Thursday tonight. So, dare I say, the Thursday football fever? Let's get right into it, my friends. Our game of the week featured two unbeaten teams, 5-0 South Point against 5-0 Sienega. Pima County School Superintendent Dustin Williams would start things off with the coin toss this evening in Vail. And early on, South Point's Gabe Madril would get the ball and have a decent gain right here. He'd give more carries tonight because South Point star running back John Robinson would be out with an ankle injury. Later, Sienega with the ball and Jamari Joyner is about to dump it off to Terrell Hayward. And when the whistle sounds, he's out of bounds. Check out the extracurricular activity of South Point's Arturo Alcaraz spinning Hayward to the ground. Come on. That's a personal foul. That's a flag. Then Sienega makes some pay. Jamari Joyner busts his way through a huge hole. Touchdown for the boys from Vail. The Bobcats show why they are Southern Arizona's number one ranked team. Sienega wins 30 to 20. All right, once upon a time in the foothills, Canyon Del Oro was hoping to take down the Falcons and the Dorados would strike first blood. Former Arizona standout Chicago Bear, Kareem Carey will be proud of his little brother after Elijah Carey is going to bust out with a 59-yard touchdown, taking it to the Casa 7-0 CDO. But Catalina Foothills comes right back in the third quarter, 7-7, tie score, no more. That was Chris Kowalczyk rocking and rolling into the end zone. CDO finds itself strong, 14-7, Catalina Foothills wins. 21 to 7. All right, moving on from the Catalina Foothills to the base of the Santa Catalina Mountains in Sabino Canyon. Let's send things over to Ari Alexander. Hey, Paul, if it weren't for the South Point Sienega matchup, this could very well be the game of the week. Catalina gunning for its sixth victory in seven games. They've been really good this year. Well, Sabino coming in also with just the one loss on the season. And here we go. Sabercats hosting Catalina in the shadow of the big inflatable cat. I need one of those for my living. Second quarter, the big guy, Malik Martin, gonna get sacked from Caden Wexler. And then two minute drill for Sabino. Alex Bell gonna make the completion to Bennett Nottingham and Sabino in the red zone right away. And the inside, they're gonna go to Isaiah Smotherman, heir to the Smotherman Jam and Jelly Fortune. I made that up, but he did score. Sabina blows out Catalina 42 to nothing. Mountain View's Black Hole ready to host Ironwood Ridge into the first quarter. The Nighthawks, Nick Brailer is going to take the pitch, and Brailer is going to find his way into the end zone. 7 0 Ironwood Ridge on the road. Still first quarter, Heath B. Miller, the little swing pass here to Brailer. And again, Brailer, the touchdown. Ironwood Ridge jumps out to a 14 0 lead, but the Mountain Lions would come right back. Edward Gastelum, the slot back, going to fight his way into the end zone. 14 to 7 the score, and the Mountain Lions are going to get in again. Jose Maria Alcala to tie the game at 14, and Mountain View comes back to win 28 23. Hey, thanks, Ari. After starting the season with three straight wins, Pueblo High School came into the evening against Rio Rico on a two game losing streak. Meanwhile, Rio Rico was hoping to win for just the second time in seven outings, and the class of 2019 is about to be having a pizza sale at Pueblo High School. Gotta get the grub on. And speaking of eating, the Pueblo High School defense was feasting on Rio Rico's offense. David Sosa avoids a tackle from DeAndre Hall, but then he will get swarmed by the Warriors. After that, Pueblo will get the ball. Dominic Carrillo Jr. will hit Luis Gonzalez after the juke. Check out Gonzalez, spin it and grin it. And then he's about to drag multiple players. He will be coming right at you. First down, Pueblo, deep in Rio Rico territory. After that, Carrillo will pitch it to Dustin Archuleta, who takes it in for the touchdown. The ball pops loose. Carrillo jumps on it. Whoever gets credit for that TD, no matter, that's a touchdown. Pueblo's on a roll and cruises to the 28-0 victory. Hey, we're far from over with after the break. We have much more, including a big showdown between Choya and Desert View. Plus, we'll bring you our play of the week. In addition to highlights from Choya and Desert View, we've got Palo Verde and Douglas, to name a few. We'll be right back. Hey. Welcome back to the Friday Football Fever on a Thursday night. How's your energy, my high school football fans? I'm Paul Sikala, Ari Alexander standing by. But first, quick reminder, you can see all of the scores for all of the big games on our ticker 
right below. Lots of games tonight pre Yom Kippur, and we'll have full rundowns on KBOA.com. But for now, let's get right back into it. On to the Sunnyside Unified School District's Desert View hosting Choya High School right off the bat. Got to love the pursuit of the Jaguar defense. First, Jesus Samaniego, and then Daniel Fernandez forcing Jordan Porter into a swarm of Desert View defenders. But after that, Jordan Porter will be making it happen, Captain. Check it out. He will utilize his quickness to bust out with a first down for Choya and is hard to stop such a mobile QB. After that, Porter is about to show he's not only quick, he's also elusive. When everything is said and done, he will break count them five tackles and route to the end zone. Choya jumps out to a 6-0 lead and in the end, it ended up being Choya winning 39-36 in a shootout. From the Sunnyside Unified School District, we head from the south to the east and to USD country. That's where Palo Verde was hosting Douglas, Cochise County. Ari Alexander joins us with more. First of all, speaking of Choya, can we tell Siri and Apple that it's Choya and not Chala? Every time I go down with Choya, Siri gets it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> both teams, these Douglas and Palo Verde, have struggled this season. Douglas coming into the contest winless, but they've lost a few close ones, while Palo Verde was hoping to avoid losing for the sixth time in seven games. Pal Verde has one of my favorite mascots, purely based on facial expression. This game had an absurd amount of fumbles, though. 28-19 in the third, Douglas fumbles the first time. Pal Verde recovers, nothing comes of it. Then Pal Verde punting, and Douglas fumbles. Kyler Conant with the recovery. That'll set up Jesus Arce with the 42-yard field goal, and he drills it. 31 to 19 Titans lead. Douglas though, fourth and one on the one, and they are stuffed, and guess what? Another fumble. This one recovered by Chris Clark and Palo Verde will go on to win 45-34. On to Flowing Wells versus Morano where the student body was showing their Tiger pride. Trenton Borgay would feed off of the energy in Northwest Pima County by hitting Jesus Valenzuela right on the money, honey. And after that, Borgay is gonna get the ball again, and he will roll left and gun it to Jesus Valenzuela. Once again, this, folks, will be a touchdown. Morana is rolling strong. The Caballeros trying to get back into it, but Morana's David Bertelson will force the fumble, and check it out. Morana about to recover, and that will set up another opportunity for Borgay to air it out to Tion Simmons. That's a touchdown, and game over, dude. This matchup was all Morana. Knocking off the Caballeros, 55 zip. All right, first we get to our Friday football fever play of the week. Then we figure out what Paul is doing with that tiger noise. I don't think that's what tigers sound like. We go back to the big matchup between CDO and Catalina Foothills. And the little carry with the big carry. Elijah Carey breaks off a 59-yard touchdown run after breaking a couple of tackles. But it would be Catalina Foothills with the win. Elijah Carey, though, gets that big touchdown run, and I think Tigers like roar, right? Is that what we're... I can't do a roar. You know, it's more like roar. just a little purr, like a... That's, that's my Who tiger. knows? <laughs> I'm a Mizzou Tiger, so I feel like I get to do that. No, you, you can. I can do a lot of sound effects, but not that, that's for sure. But one thing's for sure, too, it's that time of the night we look forward to the least. Time to say goodbye, adios, sign not a ciao for now, but don't forget, you can see this entire show again and again and again on KVOA.com, Ari. And football continues tomorrow night. There will be a few teams who did schedule their games on Yom Kippur. We will be there to get the action. Push Ridge at Empire, San Manuel at Benson, to name a few. Potentially more Tiger noises coming up. Happy Friday night, and here's more Friday Football Fever highlights.